Hey there, thanks for joining me to read George Brown, Class Clown, Trouble Magnet, chapters five and six. Uh, this little guy is just getting into all kinds of different little situations here. And today we are going to read about how he tries out for the band with Louie. And uh, let's try to find out if, if that's going to work for him. Have you ever uh, tried out for a band or have you ever played an instrument? might be fun. You could try it sometime. All right, so we will get started here. Let's get to chapter five. Now, we were making predictions when we read chapters three and four that maybe they were in a, in a history or a geography classroom because we see a map back here of the United States. This guy doesn't look too happy, does he? Um, but that everybody else seems to be okay. So let's let's read and see what we can find out in these two chapters. What kind of situation is George going to be in in these two, two these two chapters? Chapter five. Okay, class, get ready to go to the library. Mrs. Kelly announced the next morning to the kids in class four hundred one. We're going to do some research on your 50th state projects. Which state is the 50th state, George asked. Then he covered his mouth quickly. He hadn't meant to talk without raising his hand. It had just happened, and he couldn't even blame the burp. But Mrs. Kelly didn't seem angry. I'm glad somebody asked that question, George, she said. It's Hawaii. We're going to study all 50 states starting with the newest one. After finishing your research on Hawaii, each of you is going to make a project and present it to the class. Can we work in groups? Alex asked. You can work alone or in groups of no more than three people, Mrs. Kelly said. But if you work in groups, I expect your project to be extra special. Want to come work with me? Oh, let me reread re that. Good readers reread when they make a mistake. I think I accidentally added in a word that the author didn't even have there. I don't want to add words or take away words. When I read, I want to make sure that I read the words that are there. Let me reread. Re re want to work with me? Alex whispered to George as the class lined up at the door. I bet we come up with something really awesome. Totally, George agreed. We'll do a project Mrs. Kelly won't ever forget. A few minutes later, George and Alex were seated at a table in the library looking at books about Hawaii. We could do a report on surfing, George said. Did you know skateboarding was started by surfers? It's kind of like surfing on land. Alex shook his head. I don't think Mrs. Kelly would like hearing about skateboarding, he reminded George. Not so soon after what happened. If you remember, George got in some trouble with the skateboard one time. George frowned. Alex was right. It was probably best not to remind his teacher about when he skateboarded through the halls of Edith B. Sugarman Elementary School. So what else can we do that's cool? George asked. I'm not making grass skirts or flower lays. And I don't ever want to hula dance again, either. Alex said. Definitely not, George agreed. He turned the page in one of his books. Something caught his eye. That's it, he said suddenly. Shh, Mrs. Kelly whispered. Oops, George lowered his voice immediately. The book says Hawaii is built on volcanoes, he whispered to Alex. Let's make a volcano. Cool, Alex whispered back. We can build it out of clay. And then we can make it erupt at the end of our presentation, George added. How can we do that? Alex asked. George shrugged. I'm not sure, but I bet we can find directions for making an erupting volcano. For the next 45 minutes, Alex and George looked in books with science experiments until they found directions for making a fake volcano erupt. Looks like there's all the ingredients. They found what they needed. This is going to be so cool, Alex said. We can build a little clay village around the volcano. Yeah, and when the lava spills out, it'll destroy all the buildings, George said excitedly. Just knock them to the ground and bury them in hot flowing goo. 
I have tons of old action figures we can use as villagers, Alex added. At just that moment, Louie and Max walked past the desk where George and Alex were sitting. What are you two so excited about? Louie asked. Our project, Alex said. It's going to be amazing. What are you doing? Louie asked. Alex opened his mouth to answer, but George stopped him. It's a surprise, George told Louie. And there's a lot we need to do. Let's go to my house right after school, Alex suggested. Sounds like a plan, George said. Oh, no, it doesn't, Louie told George. Why not? George asked. Because you're trying out for the band, Louie answered. Since when? George asked. Since now, Louie told him. Unless you don't want to be in the band. Today's the only day you can try out. George looked from Alex to Louie and back again. He didn't know what to do. It's okay, Alex told George. We can get started tomorrow after school. Be at my house at four, Louie said. And you'd better be as good as you say you are because Mike and I are awesome. Hey, what about me? Max asked Louie. Oh yeah, you make good peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. That's my job, Max said proudly. I'm the roadie. I like PB&J, George told Max. You don't get any sandwiches unless you make the band, Louis said to George, and I'm the one who decides if you're in or out. All right, so he's going to try, try out for the band, but even though they had they had started to make plans, right, for their, for their project, I like that Alex was a good friend, and he said, you know, it's okay. I know you really want to try out for the band, so we can get started tomorrow after school on our project, and you can go ahead and uh, try out for the band tonight. That sounds like a really good friend. All right, so let's, here's the old look of the band instruments, and they're going downstairs. All right, let's see what happens with the, with the band tryout, chapter six. Remember, I decide if you're in our band, Louis told George when he got to Louis's house. I know, George told him. How could he not know? Louis had been reminding him all day long. He almost felt like saying, forget it, find somebody else to be in your dumb band. But he didn't. That wouldn't be cool. And the whole point of being in a band was to be cool. Everything is set up in the basement, Louis, Louis told George. Keyboard, drums, and guitar amps, too. You play all those instruments, George asked. Louis shook his head. I just play guitar. My brother Sam plays drums and guitar, and my mother plays keyboard, just like you. Mike and Max thought that was hilarious. Max laughed so hard he actually snorted. <laughs> George frowned. He knew why they were laughing. It was never cool to do something that someone's mother did. Come on, let's get started, Louis said as he began to lead the boys to the basement. He sped down one of the long hallways on the wheels of his sneakers. Louis's house was huge. The dining room was big enough to fit their whole class for lunch. No wonder Louis has sneakers with wheels, George thought. He needs wheels to get around this place. Remember what we said one time in, the, in a previous chapter, when these words are slanted like this, they're called italic words. These words are in italics. And that means that he is thinking usually when you see those words in, in, in a book, the author wants you to pay close attention to those words and um, know that George is thinking this. He didn't say it out loud. Remember, if he said it out loud, he would need um quotation marks, kind of like over here, where he said, come on, let's get started. Okay, so he's thinking those words in italics. As George passed the family room, he saw the walls were covered with photos. Most were of Louis and his brother on vacations, at the beach, on skis, and at amusement parks. In the living room, George spotted a huge flat screen TV. Wow, it would be awesome to have one of those. George followed Louie down the narrow stairs off the kitchen to the basement. Sure enough, there were the drums, the amps, and a small black keyboard. There were also glass shelves with about a million trophies and ribbons on them. Are these yours? George asked Louie. Louie shook his head. Uh, most of them are my brother Sam's. 
Sam's the star pitcher for the middle school baseball team, Max told George. And last year he won the county spelling bee, Mike added. I have trophies too, Louie said. Like over there, I got that one for coming in third in a swim race at camp. Cool, George said. And this year I'm going to win first place in the talent show, Louie said. You get a trophy for that. Well, don't just stand there, he said. Let's see what you can do. George could feel a nervous feeling starting up in his belly. It wasn't like bouncing burp bubbles or anything. It was more like a bunch of slimy worms crawling all around inside of him. But that wasn't going to stop George from playing. He knew he was good. Now he'd show Bluey. He wriggled his fingers to loosen them up. Then he started playing one of his favorites from when he was in Slinky and the Worms. Bang your head, stomp your feet, don't you think music's neat? George sang as he played the, the keyboard. What song is that? Louis asked him. It's called Bang Your Head, George answered. I've never heard of it, Louis said. Me neither, Max agreed. That's because I wrote it, George said. Well, me and my friends, Kevin and Jeremy, the kids in Cherrydale really liked it. Well, this is Beaverbrook, Louis said. How can I tell if you're playing all the right notes if it's a made-up song? George shrugged. I can play something else. How about Don't Stop Believing? My brother's band, band played that in their concert last year, Louis said. George smiled proudly. He knew that Sam was in middle school. George was only in elementary school, and he already knew the song. He put his fingers on the keyboard and began to play. George didn't miss a note. When the song ended, George waited for someone to say something, but no one did, at least not at first. Then finally, Louie frowned. I guess that was okay, he said. And besides, we need a keyboard in the band. You're in. Awesome, George said, and he really meant it. Are you hungry? Max asked. Look at Max here. <laughs> I don't know if I would want to eat anything that he made. George looked over the table at the in the corner where Max was making sandwiches. He watched Max smear some grape jelly and peanut butter on two slices of bread. He wiped some snot from his nose with his hand and then slapped the piece of the slices of bread together. Here, Max said, um, no thanks, George told him. I'm not really hungry anymore, you know, and there's an italic word. So he's thinking that he didn't say it out loud to Max. He didn't want to hurt his feelings. So he wanted to be a nice person. He just thought it in his head. Okay, so now we have to come up with a name for the band, Louie said. What do you guys think of Louie and the Lice? George made a face. I don't want to be called a louse. Well, I like it, Louis said. And unless you can come up with something better, that's the name. Snort. George listened as Max sucked up some snot back in, back up in his nose. Then he watched as he wiped his nose with the back of his hand. What about the runny noses? George said quietly. What did you say? Louis asked him. The runny noses, George repeated. We could be the runny, the runny noses. That's pretty good, Mike said. Then he looked quickly over at Louis. I mean, I'm not sure. Do you like it, Louis? It's actually not bad, Louis told him. Where'd you get that idea? Max asked George. Achoo! George laughed. I guess it was just something I heard somewhere. Well, pretty soon everyone is going to hear about us, Louis said. The Runny Noses are going to be the biggest band in Edith B. Sugarman Elementary history. What do you mean you don't know how to play Don't Drop the Rock? Louis shouted at George during the band rehearsal a few days later. It's the first song you learn on guitar. But I don't play guitar, George told Louis. I play piano. Do you know I'm not lazy, I'm just crazy? Never heard of it, Louis said. Me neither, Mike said. He bashed his cymbals and then hit one of his drums. I want to play something with a fast beat. Anyone want a salami sandwich? Max asked. No, Mike, Louie, and George all shouted at once. It was the first thing the three of them had agreed on all afternoon. This is why my old band wrote our own songs, George told Louie and Mike. That way we all learned the song together. 
Will you stop talking about your old band? Louis shouted. Then he stopped for a minute. I know. Why don't we write our own song? Something no one has heard of, ever heard of before. Then they won't know if we're playing right or wrong. George was about to say that he had just suggested that, but he knew Louis well enough not to bother. An hour later, the runny noses had written their first song. Well, at least part of it anyway. Let's take it from the top, Louis told George and Mike. Then maybe we can figure out what's not working. George put his fingers on the keyboard. Mike clicked his sticks together. Five, six, seven, eight, Mike said. What are you doing? Louis demanded. He's counting us down, George told him. The drummer always counts to eight before the song starts. That way we all start playing at the same time. It's really important to count. Then I should do it, Louis said. After all, I'm the leader of this band. George shrugged. He didn't really care who counted, just as long as they could play already. Five, six, seven, eight, Louis counted. Then the band started to play. We're the runny noses and we're running after you, Louis sang. The guys didn't get too far into the song before Louis's big brother, Sam, came downstairs to see what was going on. Yo, dude, is this your band? Sam asked Louis. Yeah, Louis said. He sounded more quiet than usual. I never heard that song before, Sam said. Yeah, well, we wrote it, Louis mumbled. He, slumbled, he slumped a little bit. I know it's not great, but we're... No, it's actually pretty good, Sam told him. Louis stood a little, a little taller. I wrote most of it, he boasted. George knew that wasn't true, but he didn't say anything. But the opening chords need some work, Sam said. That's just what I was thinking, Louis agreed. Mind if I take a crack at it, Sam asked. Maybe I can help you guys out. Louis shrugged and slipped out of his guitar strap. Sure, if you want, he said, handing Sam the guitar. Cool. Sam said he swung, the, he swung the guitar strap over his shoulder and looked at Mike. Count us down, would you, Mike? Okay, Mike said. He clicked his sticks. Five, six, seven, eight. Sam began to play. He was really good. Louis was good, too, but not like his brother. Sam knew exactly which chords gave the song a really strong opening riff. All right, so now Sam, the older brother, is involved. He's a new character in our story. Well, remember, we've been keeping track of our characters. Mostly, we have the two groups of guys. They each have three, and it's kind of like a nice group uh, with George and then kind of a not-so-nice group with uh, Louie and the others. And um, so what do you think is going to happen soon? What's going to happen next in our plot we just had George try out for the band. Uh, that was one event. And I would say another uh, separate event would be that he actually made it into the band uh, because I, I don't know about you, but I didn't think Louie was going to let him in the band. So somehow he got in the band. So what do you think is going to happen next in our plot? I see a volcano in the picture. Lots of ingredients down here. I see a spider down there. I don't know what he's there for. It's got all of his little characters he was talking about. Lots of ingredients over here. Hmm. So I wonder what they're going to, maybe they'll start working on their, their school project, right? With the volcano and their report about Hawaii. Maybe. So let's talk about the setting. The setting is where? Do you remember where the, these two chapters took place? Where were they going? Yeah, they weren't in school anymore. They went down to Louis's basement, didn't they? They were in this big, he had a big house and they went down to the basement and they were trying out for the band there. So they were in Louis's basement. That's the setting of these two chapters. And were there any conflicts in these, in these chapters? I think the only problems we might have come across was, you know, the the nervousness that George felt. He felt kind of nervous. He said his tummy was kind of gurgling around and it wasn't because of a burp. Um, he was a little nervous trying out for the band, but he got through it, didn't he? He persevered. He got through it and he did pretty well, actually, well enough that Louis let him in the band. So what could a theme for these two chapters be? He tried hard. He did his best. 
So maybe work hard, give it your all. Maybe that might be a theme that the author wants us to learn from this book. Um, maybe, you know, persevere, keep, keep at it and don't give up and you can, you can achieve your dreams. That's a good theme for these two chapters, I think. All right. Well, we will um, close our book for now and we will come back to chapters seven and eight a little bit later. Maybe take a break, share this video if you like it and um, subscribe for me. Thanks for joining and we will see you soon. Bye.